most people might think we'll have to give up economic development if we're to save the environment, but not if you look at the example of Denmark, which last year achieved startling economic growth, consuming 7% more energy, while at the same time cutting its emissions by 13%. In today's report from the Nordic Nation, we investigate the country's water recycling facilities. On a wet afternoon by a canal in Copenhagen, a jazz band entertains the tourists. Keeping in step with Denmark's unpredictable weather is more difficult as the clouds part and the sun comes out again. But despite the frequent showers, the entire country does not have a significant river to speak of. Even the canal that cuts through the city's colorful Niehaven district contains seawater. The flat landscape of Denmark, where the highest hill is only 180 meters tall, cannot hold water, so Copenhagen is forced to use seawater and underground sources. The canals, lakes and springs that you see are all man-made. Given that Copenhagen gets over 99% of its water from underground, if its sewage is not properly treated and reused, the consequences of wastewater seeping down to the water table could be devastating. Linetten is Denmark's largest wastewater treatment plant and is situated right by the capital. But the perfectionist Danes who run it say they do not just want to treat wastewater, but recycle and reuse it. Sand in the middle and grease in the side channel. And then the machine you can see going to and fro is removing the sand at the bottom and the grease at the top. As manager Jens Christensen shows us around, the facilities do not look so different to any other treatment plant. The same steps in the purification process are followed, from sedimentation to filtering, removing the grease and then to biotreatment. You see here, bubbles. And what is this? It was we call aeration. Underneath uh, the bridge there, big rotors are running round and put this way taking air with oxygen down to the bacteria in the water. In this stage, the tank is aerated with oxygen, which allows the bacteria to digest the organic waste in the water, producing bubbles on the surface. Finally, the dead microorganisms sink to the bottom of the tank, leaving clean water on top. The sludge at the bottom is thickened and sent to a digester, where it makes methane gas that can be turned into electricity and heat. where we will heat up the sludge till uh, 33, 34 degrees and then give very good conditions for the bacteria to work for us. And they will eat and have a good time and then this way we produce biogas methane. Any remaining sediment is dried and turned into fuel. After the final step of being purified through activated carbon and other filters, all that's left is steam from the chimney. The plant treats about 80 million cubic meters of wastewater a year at a cost of 7 US dollars and 50 cents per cubic meter for a total annual bill of about 600 million US dollars. Yet there is more to the purification process than meets the eye. I will bring you down in the underworld. Another world, in fact. You don't see it, but this is necessary if you we can walk here down you know for many hours ah, not many hours but some hours in the bowels of the treatment plant there are so many compressors that even Jens Christensen loses count up to 41,500 cubic meters of water rushes through these pipes every hour the Danes excel at reusing over 90 percent of the water taken by the pipes to each stage of the process we try to reuse all the things from the wastewater or from the process here in the plant. Either we burn it or we recycle it using it. Back on the surface, flowers gently sway in the sunshine. Being environmentally friendly seems to come naturally to the Danes, who are turning a new page in the story of wastewater treatment and green energy production.